thank you so much for the introduction, your uh, uh, Royal Highness and distinguished guests, and of course, uh, my colleague and my friend, um, Professor um, Richard Sullivan. So uh, I really, uh, I'm originally from Sudan, so this was supposed to be on uh, Sudan, but I really wanted to make sure and to include the Sahel region and the changing dynamics of the world that uh, we live in. So I'll be talking about cancer control in conflict zones in, in Africa, Sudan and the Sahel region. And uh, one, I think the most important question we should ask ourselves is how many people are actually displaced by conflicts in Africa? A lot of people do not know the answer to that question. And, uh, and uh, by uh, displaced, we mean internal displaced persons, IDPs, refugees, and asylum seekers. So if we look at the recent data from the uh, Africa Cancer um, uh, Africa Center for uh, Strategic Studies, uh, actually this figure is actually more than over 40 million and perhaps uh, almost close to 60 million. And uh, this represents more than double the figure in 2016. And uh, we know that uh, more than 77% of uh, uh, um, you know, people displaced uh, because of conflicts in Africa are actually internally displaced, and 96% of refugees uh, do stay um, uh, in the uh, in Africa. So this class, this uh, picture that we're used to, uh, and which is quite tragic of uh, people crossing the Mediterranean and and dying on and during that cro crossing is just really the tip of the iceberg of uh, how uh, people are affected by conflicts uh, and climate injustice in Africa. So, and if we look at the countries that are actually um, affected by these conflicts, uh, many of the, the 16 countries uh, that really are continuous in conflict, they're actually contagious, stretching from the Western Sahel region um, all the way uh, to the Horn of Africa and they're encompassing the Chad, uh, the Lake Chad uh, Basin and the Great uh, Lake uh, regions uh, uh, as far as uh, the DRC or, or the Congo. And this is what now we know as the African arc of uh, instability. And again, this represents uh, in dark brown here, the Sahara region, all the way from Senegal from, to Eritrea. And if you look at what this, uh, the Sahel um, region historically, it's Sahel is, is actually an Arabic word, which means the shore, uh, but it was uh, really the shore between, uh, it presented to, to the people in North Africa, the uh, the border to the um, uh, to Sub-Saharan uh, Africa. And uh, as you can see, this is Sudan. It's in, we are in the middle of the, or the center of the Sahel uh, region. And uh, now the modern definition is more of uh, something that's based on actually on climate region. And it encompasses um, about 12 uh, countries, uh, including part of uh, Northern Ethiopia and of course Eritrea and Sudan, and it can expand all the way uh, to uh, Somalia. And uh, if you look at their recent publications from the WHO, uh, they did call in uh, last year in June 2022 for the WHO emergency appeal for humanitarian crisis in the Sahel. And this uh, if you look in, into that, it's been going on for more than uh, 10, 15 years, uh, but there's more attention to it. It's still one of the fastest yet most forgotten crises in uh, in the world. And I'm really quoting here uh, from, from the report because of armed conflict, climate change, and I would not uh, call it climate change, I call it climate injustice because uh, our people have produced very little of the climate um, uh, of the reasons for climate change, but they are the recipients of uh, the, uh, the effect of that uh, climate change, food insecurity, disease, loss of livelihood, and uh, political instability. And uh, according to that report, again, you see what uh, Richard has talked about is really concentration on, on infectious diseases. So that report uh, concentrates on uh, malaria, cholera, and, and of course there is no, doubt that these are major killers 
uh, I, I would like to um, say what I liked about the report is that it did mention gender-based violence. It did mention mental health, and I can see that effect on, in, in, on Sudanese displaced uh, people, my own uh, family and uh, my own community. However, there was no mention of uh, non-communicable disease. And if you look at, at Sudan, uh, a lot of people, a lot of you have heard about the origin of Darfur, uh, especially if you know what celebrities like uh, George Clooney have uh, made it uh, some of the area of interest, although they lost uh, that interest later on. But uh, Darfur is considered the first climate change conflict. And it's in West, uh, this area, a red area here in Western Sudan. And uh, it's because of the, uh, in, the first, in the 21st century, this climate change conflict because of convergence of environmental political factors uh, leading uh, to uh, the war that started in, uh, in Darfur. And if you look at the climate change in that area, in 60 years, uh, Lake Chad, uh, which is really a huge basin and a lot of uh, and a huge ecosystem uh, in um, in Central Africa has shrunk by ninety percent. So there it is in 1973. I know it's a complex uh, ecosystem, but it's a lot of countries are involved in it. Uh, Niger, uh, Nigeria, Cameroon, uh, Chad, and and uh, all the way to Western Sudan are affected by the fact that it shrunk from what it was here, all the blue area here to this very tiny blue area here in 2017 compared to 1973. So there's a lot of pressure on settled farmers, on uh, um, uh, pastoralist uh, communities. So uh, I, I think it's, it's, it beholds us to ask, uh, all of these people are being displaced, more than uh, 40 million people. Do they actually have cancer needs, have the world really uh, paid any attention to the cancer care needs of more than 40 uh, million uh, people. And uh, if we look at all the work that has been done in uh, cancer care in conflict zone, what was it, who was it done for? And where is the spotlight on cancer care in conflict zone? So before the, uh, just last month, um, uh, in November, I was preparing for this uh, similar talk for the African Organization for Research and Training Cancer meeting in Senegal. And I just looked at PubMed, not uh, PubMed is this search engine uh, for uh, health related uh, topics. And if you look at the number of articles that have been published by the Ukraine, 398, Syria, 194. DRC zero. Of course, this is not comprehensive because I know at least two articles about uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Somalia, which has been very much affected by uh, by uh, these uh, conflicts in the 80s, zero. Sudan, uh, it was one at that time. We know that the publications are now about four or five. And so there is a huge disparity on between 194 in Syria, which is really quite modern conflict com uh, compared to Somalia. And, and so the question is why, why is the spotlight not on Africa? And that is really a very important question uh, uh, that we need to deal with uh, today. So if we look at uh, internal factors within Africa, why this spotlight is not on conflict zone, uh, because there is still, uh, as Richard mentioned, there's emphasis on immediate effect on crises, uh, mostly related to infectious diseases such as epidemics, uh, cholera, malaria, and uh, and the others. And also what we see in Africa, there is still, uh, and in a lot of LMIC, there's a big mismatch between cancer as a public health threat and its uh, position in the priorities of countries and continental agenda uh, within Africa as cancer is now uh, you know, advancing to become the major health threat, but still our concentration is not on it. Uh, we know that uh, there's a lot of uh, weakness in the cancer leadership within the continent that is changing, but the change uh, with uh, emergence of new cadre of young oncologists and researchers and health workers, but it's not changing rapidly enough. And also within uh, the uh, relationship between the emerging cancer organization and the African Union, there is also a, a, a weakness uh, of relationship. Other internal factors within Africa that makes it uh, uh, less of a spotlight for uh, uh, 
war and cancer is that uh, there's weakness of the research and structure and the data of uh, and the data collection system is weak even in areas where uh, uh, that, uh, there is peace and settled communities, we don't have adequate data. So let alone in um, in conflict area. Also, the research priorities, the cancer research priorities are still governed by uh, partnership with high income countries, which are not really um, being uh, very much interested in, in cancer and uh, conflict. Uh, those for several reasons. Uh, which uh, may, uh, we may uh, look at. And of course, there's also a weakness of uh, crisis preparedness measures as at the level of Minister of Health or at the uh, new uh, uh, national cancer control plans because they're mostly new in the continent. And uh, even when there is uh, um, crisis preparedness measures, they are not very comprehensive and they don't include conflict zone. Other internal factors within Africa, and this is a very sad reality, is that the conflict zones themselves uh, tend to be countries with no or very little cancer care available, such as Eritrea or South Sudan. And so sometimes you, you uh, it's a legitimate question: if you can't, if you don't have it, how can you miss it? But oh, I think this is the wrong uh, question. And. Also, these conflict zones, uh, countries within Africa, are often excluded from, uh, from African and international partnership. But the cautionary tale in Central Sudan was not that excluded, but because the periphery around it is so much devoid of cancer care that we are seeing uh, the collapse uh, also uh, uh, approaching this hub of cancer cares. Uh, external factors of why and this uh, relate to the uh, international communities, the weakness of uh, response to um, uh, conflict and cancer in Africa is, is, is a lot of bias and out racism, outright racism against Africans that the uh, black lives do not matter whether in high income countries or whether they are uh, in Africa. There is also a preference of the international global cancer community to working within countries that are called stable, or in geographically desirable locations. So the Sahel region is a uh, very arid uh, area. Um, there's a lot of desertification, not a lot of safaris. So uh, a lot of uh, international community partners do not like to work there. And of course, there are very uh, a lot of geopolitical factors. So uh, Sudan, which has uh, been in a dictatorship for a long time, there was a lot mm -hmm. of prolonged US sanctions, which were uh, um, were worked against, uh, you know, fixing the radiotherapy machine and, and affected the cancer care in many uh, aspects. So what we have is a mix of internal and external factors that le leave a cancer care in conflict zone in Africa without uh, to be a very low priority and leads to a climate of helplessness, hopelessness, and fragmentation. So if we take the care of uh, the uh, the case of Sudan, for example. Uh, Sudan is actually, uh, a lot of people do not know that, is it, it is, a, is a hub of uh, cancer care in the midst of what I always call a cancer care desert zone because all of the, most of the surrounding countries, well, perhaps with the exception of Egypt to the north, uh, which is actually a lot out of reach for a lot of people, except if, unless they are very uh, affluent, uh, the other countries surrounding Sudan, such as Chad or Central Africa Republic or South Sudan, have very little uh, cancer care or none. Uh, while in Sudan, we find that the older cancer center, the uh, Khartoum um, Oncology Hospital used to, used to know as Rex, was started in 1964. Another um, uh, uh, you know, another uh, significant uh, stride in Sudan was that uh, there has been in the last 10 to, to 20 years a uh, decentralization of cancer uh, care with a lot of provincial cancer centers and hospitals that have started even in, in Darfur, such as Fasher, Niala, you have Kosti uh, in the White uh, Nile area was actually my family is originally from that region. And then there is um, Kasala and Medeni and even Northern Sudan in Morawi. And uh, cancer medicines used to be provided uh, for free. So they, at least there was a partial uh, universal health coverage. Now, what's happening in Sudan, and this is as of October 16, uh, from the United Nations, Sudan faces the world's largest internal displacement crisis. 
And uh, as much as uh, my heart goes out for uh, our colleagues and for the cancer patients in Gaza, this is largely forgotten by everyone uh, in the world that the largest internal displacement crisis is actually happening in Sudan. And this is the cancer, uh, uh, the Khartoum Oncology Hospital uh, here, um, uh, the symbol, what happened with the effect on the conflict on cancer care, complete collapse of services in Khartoum. This increased the demand on provincial centers uh, and um, the uh, increasing workload and pressure, radiotherapy. There were uh, public radiotherapy machines in, 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 the, in the Blue Nile area and, and in uh, Northern Sudan. Uh, and one of the machines actually broke because, broke down because there's no, uh, because of the pressure, uh, as a Khartoum is now out of service, um, and most of the radiotherapy is for non-curable diseases, mainly for uh, palliative uh, um, uh, cancers now. Cancer medicines and uh, pain med medicines are in short supply because of disruption of the supply chain, and also uh, the um, uh, most of the warehouses were in Khartoum, and we know that a lot of the patients uh, present in late stages, so the uh, more access to morphine is essential. Cancer surgery, uh, which was morally happening in Khartoum and in Medini, uh, it now took a back seat uh, in favor of trauma and emergency surgeries because of the uh, attacks on hospital, because of the infrastructure, childhood cancer with Sudan really had made a lot of progress. And uh, now we're seeing a lot of relapses in ALL. Cancer workforce is... Uh, and, and Sudan had made a lot of progress in cancer workforce. So compared to neighboring countries, uh, there was a lot of, of local training of oncologists. And uh, we had, uh, uh, strangely or surprisingly, we had enough uh, radiotherapy um, uh, workforce and physicists compared to other, to other uh, countries in, in the region. But uh, no... Um, uh, no salaries have been paid uh, since April. A lot of them have to leave the country and uh, a lot of them uh, actually came into contact uh, with danger and some will have lost their lives. And uh, a lot of patients used to come from neighboring countries such as Eritrea or even South Sudan and Chad. And that uh, means uh, those patients are left without uh, healthcare. What was the response to the crisis? There was massive internal um, mobilization by the workforce. Uh, and I'm very proud uh, to say that a lot of them have, uh, uh, you know, uh, flocked to the provincial centers, which are trying to upscale their services, but the pressure is very hard. Uh, there is uh, pressure on palliative radiotherapy, attempts to do telemedicine, either by uh, doctors in the diaspora or local home. The Sudanese diaspora, including doctors, trying to find uh, corridors of safe uh, uh, to, to provide uh, medicines. When it comes to the role of African community, uh, there is it's suboptimal. There is a lot of uh, actions of solidarity, but we I would say there is no concerted effort uh, to address uh, the conflict uh, because that is not has been a priority yet in Africa. And the role of the international community again, uh, there has been act, acts of solidarity from ASCO or from UICC in terms of uh, aware uh, raising awareness. Uh, but still is very suboptimal uh, because uh, people are not used to the uh, fact that there's cancer in Africa. What are, lesson, what are the lessons that we need to uh, learn from the, uh, uh, what happened in, in Sudan? There's actually some resilience in the cancer care system for two reasons. One is investment in, in the workforce, and uh, that uh, led to a margin of um, uh, you know, of care that's being provided to the patients now because we do have work, uh, workforce in place and also because there was investment in, the, in decentralization of cancer care services, which allowed uh, that that now Darfur and Khartoum are at the epicenter of the, of the conflict. Uh, some of the care can be shifted to other areas. But, and also uh, we have worked uh, with the international community such as Lancet, and the ASCO to try and uh, raise awareness about uh, the what happened in Sudan or co as compared to other areas in the Sahel. But this resilience is not enough. So what we need, we need African solidarity and conflict preparedness. 
We need equity in cancer investment in cancer care zones, in conflict prone uh, zones. We need to address climate injustice because it's at the root of what's happening in the Sahel region, including Sudan. We need to have access. We need to understand that access to healthcare is a cause, not just an effect of conflict. And the new reality is that the even in Africa, the Central Sudan, or despite all the problems around it, used to be a safe haven, but now uh, the uh, cancer care hubs are being affected, and so we need uh, global action. And why is we have to ask ourselves why is the Sahel not coming together? So all of these countries, uh, this is, uh, and if you can take this, the case of Sudan, Sudan is a leading force in the IGAD which is uh, Intergovernmental Authority and Development, which is the, in East African regions, but it's not a member of the East African trade bloc. Sudan at the level of the CHO is a member of EMRO, but not a member of AFRO. And this is really a colonial legacy of fragmentation and arbitrary dele delineation in the border uh, uh, within Africa. And here are my colleagues at the, the University of Khartoum, Soba Hospital, where they had a cancer prevention unit, for, especially for cervical cancer. And uh, and even uh, before the pandemic, this has been before the uh, this what happened now in the conflict. Uh, people have uh, really pointed out that the fragmentation and discordance of Sudan geographical and epidemiologic profile was. Uh, does not match its affiliation with the major international and regional organization, and this weakens its impact of this organization is working in working with its local house policymakers and institution. We hardly ever sit with our colleagues in Chad or elsewhere. And the, to answer the question, do actually cancer uh, these displaced people, do they have cancer care needs? Yes, they do. Patients come all the way from Darfur, from Chad, from Northern Nigeria, trying to seek care uh, uh, in Sudan, and this is being published. However, there is no um, major interest uh, in these. So uh, in the end, why is cancer uh, and war matter? Because actually the patients who are, or the, these population are displaced, they do have cancer care needs. Cancer does not know how uh, and does not know whether you are in conflict zone or not. 86% of deaths from NCDs occur in LMICs. 77% uh, of the, those internally displaced I still stay in uh, in Africa and 96% of the refugees stay in Africa. And the average length of displacement is now very long, to, uh, 20 years for refugees and 10% for internally displaced people. So. Uh, these people will get cancer and they need to be addressed. Unfortunately, this is uh, um, uh, the uh, destruction that's happened recently in Soba University Hospital, which is uh, my alma mater, University of Khartoum. And this is in June. And, uh, and this is why some of the displaced patients from all over the Sahel region used to come. And now this, uh, uh, this is being uh, destroyed and is no longer uh, um, uh, able to uh, to to, to um, receive patients, and uh, this tell you just if you take radiotherapy, and this is a Sahel region. This is Mali, Sudan, um, Eritrea, and the redder you are, the more likely you don't have enough radiotherapy machines. And and if you take of Somalia, uh, Eritrea, and Chad and South Sudan, there is no radiotherapy machine. And uh, the others have the density per population is really uh, sometimes uh, a wonder therapy machine, for example, in Mali for 20 million people. And so we need to look at the invisibility of cancer in the Sahel is really related to access to cancer care and conflict and climate uh, injustice are a loop of uh, cause and effect. And it's not really uh, and that's one of the reasons of the causes of the effect uh, of the of the conflict. So we need to we need a paradigm shift. Conflicts are increasing. We should shift from passive reactive position to cancer of conflict preparedness, especially at regional level. We need to recognize that health equity and gender equality inequality uh, inequality are, uh, are one of the predisposition for uh, war, and so they are prerequisite for for peace. And these are one of the causes of the conflict, not. And so we need to address climate injustice and work on global solution. 
and uh, we need to look at cancer as a major health threat in LMIC, and it must have its place in the agenda for peace, not just as war, and we uh, need to tackle academic inertia, need to collect data within the African Organization of for Research and Training in Cancer. We are creating a body that will coordinate response research and policy. And uh, we need to uh, work for solidarity and equity between countries who is not here today, uh, as we all uh, deserve uh, peace uh, and dignity. Uh, so uh, thank you very much. I'll stop here.